Hi YouTubers. Today we're going to be looking at a valve to save water. See this little fella here? And you see that thing over there? That's a x-ray machine for taking pictures of x-ray crystallography. Now it generates about 5,000 watts of heat which somehow flows through these little tubes of water over to here this thing called, I think it's a chiller now this has to take and get rid of that heat and then send the same water back into the system so you're recycling the same water so it transfers that heat from the city water spewing out of that pipe and then the waste hot water gets thrown down gets wasted it's too bad too bad 5,000 watt heater going well at least when this thing is having a downtime in terms of let's say you turn your x-ray machine to low it has, or used to be here, a valve which would sense the temperature like a refrigeration style Freon and the hotter that Freon in this little bulb there sticks into the, the uh, Freon of the system so the freon inside the bulb will expand with heat and push up somehow on the thing that goes in there. Well, when it's cool then something pushes back. Let's take a look at that valve. Here we go. You got this mechanical spring which you can adjust to be more forceful and it's going to be pushing down on that and if we take a peek inside well what the heck I'm going to take a peek What the heck? I'm going to take a better peek. Holy cow, did I tighten that or what? Oh, there. It fell apart on me. Alright, so down below is the refrigeration it expands and pushes up. Alright, pushes up. Now this that rubber will set on that surface to close off the valves. You see the see a little br black hole there where the water which way does the water fall? Oh, there. See the arrow? So, this one, where the inlet coming cold water, there's a little hole for that, would then flow through the hole up here. And if that thing, if this hole is not blocked, it lets the water through. Now this says a rebuild kit. Uh, looks like it was uh, purchased off of eBay. Of course, you can see that little date there. 
product of Mexico seat repair kit well let's look at the old seat so that's the thing that screws in I put the new one in already unfortunately so there's the back side of it that's not the seat part there's the seat part I wrapped some Teflon tape so you see that white tape now thinking about it there's your incoming water oh no that's your outgoing water alright so then the water would then travel from the bottom up well, that makes sense it would the pressure of the water would lift lift this this thing off of its seat to let the water flow now then it's going to be a battle between the water pressure from the well maybe not actually because down here you've got these uh, bellows type things you got one on the bottom and one at the top so those bellows would be pushed on equally so that uh, probably takes the pressure of the city water out of the equation so now you just have the uh, alright so this thing fits down in that hole we saw at the very beginning where the where the uh, freon or the refrigerant expands or contracts and pushes up or down on that uh, well pushes up or down on it whatever is in that hole so this thing must be in the hole and it gets pushed out the hotter that uh, bulb of Freon gets and that is transmitted that is transmitted by this sits in that and then that screwed on to that and it pushes well, what pushes back? What pushes back this way? By golly, that spring set up. That hefty, hefty spring is fighting the bulb freon pressure to try to close that valve back again. All right, but let's just say that freon gets so hot, it gets high pressure, it's just going to overcome that spring and push this off of that seat. And the water will then flow from the bottom hole through there and up and out into the world beyond. So, cold freon, less pressure, valve closes because the spring is more powerful. Hot freon opens, allowing this cool life cooling water to flow and cool the system. Now guess what? I took it apart. Sure I got a picture to follow but man those are hard to read. Hard to read. Well, by the way what are we servicing here? Servicing a V46 and V47 3 8 through one and a half inch valves. Caution. I'm supposed to cool the bulb by submerging it in ice. But you notice my bulb went into the system. And very fortunately, I don't have a V47. I have a V46. So my butt is saved. Otherwise, the expanding freon with nothing to push against it may like make it explode out like a balloon or something. Or at least become deformed. So... Silly me, I forgot to take a picture of the original valve. What can I do? How can I make sense of it all? Alright, here's the old piece. So the rebuild kit comes with some new pieces. So there's the new piece. Holy cow, am I going to be able to figure this out? 
Actually, yes, you can. Can I do it with one hand? Maybe. All right, let's let's take a let's take a little mystery right here. Um, so this, you see, I still have the old thing stuck to that. Now you can look at that mark there. And that's where the spring, or wait, does this piece go like that? And then that goes on there. Yeah, I, be I believe so. That goes on there. You see the outline of the mark? It's a bit off center, isn't it? Outline of the mark seems to go like that. No, wait a minute. So this, okay, that's like that, based on the mark on the old part, and then this indentation would be where this pushes, and there's the guide, the hex shape guide. Anyways, if you get this kit, make sure you take a picture of it. Take a picture of it. Or if you like reading these little scrawny diagrams, you can do that as well. Let's see if I can put this together. Since we have nothing to do tonight, right? It's midnight. The cats are out playing. The dog's asleep. What can we do? So that's the new foamy piece. Now there must have been a little modern update to this foamy stuff because the old foamy piece, let's go ahead and tear it off, does not seem to have, does not seem to have, or does it? No it doesn't, but since I just tore it off I better, alright now you think maybe this extra thin layer of plastic might be for the other surface because I'm just guessing here because the old one didn't have it. It was just a thing to kind of like help be rubbery in the travels from the spring to the rest of the thing. It somehow modifies the spring presser a little over that distance. Alright, but the one thing I think we can realize is this then turns away turns away and then that alright, oh, be, let's just, let me just back off let me just say some other, other, other important things where is it? here it is this is the old deceit look what water corrosion can do there's the new seat upside down though that's the seating surface though. Nice and smooth. Now believe it or not, okay in the toolkit they give you this chunk of hex iron so that can fit in there and be your allen wrench. Might be a custom size. Kind of push it in there. Look at it. Nice and, nice and snug. Nice and snug. So you can rotate, you can spin that in, spin it down. Now look what, look what we got for the old seat. Look what we got for the old seat. Look at the look at the play that has in it. Quite a bit of play. In fact there's so much play when I tried to get the old seat out using this tool this would just like click over you know it would not remove it. I had to go get a hex hex key set put the valve gently in a vise and rotate this out but you know with a little bit of WD-40 and a couple of minutes waiting I was surprised that it came out quite freely look at those threads on the inside are quite intact it's just the stuff that got in contact with the water really got eaten the heck away alright um, although I can't do it with one hand very well 
in order to uh, re re realize how all these parts went together, I followed some evidence on the old gaskets. These are using like pairs for double strength. So you kind of see the markings where things used to be, and I deduced how to put it back together, which then matched with the instructions, which I just wasn't quite sure reading their little two-dimensional diagrams. But that's the key is I saw evidence on surfaces. Let's let me just try to kind of give you an example. Um, here, you see this has four like notches. Well that showed up on the old gasket if I could see there it is. So look at that. This has one, two, three, four, which means that that part probably mated with that part. That was like that. Um, was it upside down? Now that probably made it with that. Now look on the other side, you see a predominance of two marks with these being a little weaker. So is there a piece of metal or something that had a predominance of two marks? Let's look at this. Oh, look at there, you have, oh, I don't know, would that be enough to give a mark? Hard to say, isn't it? Is there any other part out there that would, would fit that? Alright, don't do what I did. Take a detailed picture. Every time you take something off, take a snapshot. So you can get it back together without having to suffer through these uh, diagrams. Alright, what valve is this for? Johnson Controls V46AA-74 Factory set to 105 pounds. How do you know it's set to 105 pounds? If you're going to be resetting it, because you got to crank that spring all the way as loose as you can get it, according to take the take apart instructions. I know there was a mark on here somewhere. Right there, see that little mark? That's your factory set mark to bring, I guess, something back to that level. Probably the top of that uh, spring retaining thing. Okay, maximum water pressure 150. If you have too much, you're going to probably blow these. Gas, gas gasket pairs out or whatever you call them. What do they call these things? Bellows? Yeah. Alright, I was hoping to have a little puzzle game here to put this back together, but my I'm deteriorating so rapidly. We'll have to call it a day. Thank you very much for rebuilding your valve instead of buying a new one. Heck, buying a new one would not be any fun. And when you actually have a valve taken apart, you can actually, you know, it makes so much more sense. Water's going through there, what's going on? You got the fight between the spring that's set at a set point and the variable Freon um, pushing back and forth to get that, to get this uh, seat to rise and let the water through. I always saw those crazy diagrams, you know, and then go to textbook stuff. I just, all right, all right. But now I say, yeah, it sees how it works. All right, I couldn't uh, easily get this barbed hose thing, so I, I sliced off a little bit of the hose and started peeling gently away at it because you do not want to take a razor blade and wrap and firmly slice it, you're going to leave a mark on all each and every hose barb and that's a point of leakage. So I have to gently peel that off. I guess I'm going to warm it up with a blowtorch or something, grip it with some pliers and get it to turn off there. 
Alright, 20 minutes. Thanks for watching. And to all a good night.